Hello, I'm Steve Robertson. Homelessness, is it an issue strictly in Adelaide and other big cities, or is it a real problem here on the South Coast? Joining me in the studio today is Alan Purcell, who's had quite a bit of experience in helping the homeless in Adelaide. G'day, Alan. Hi, Steve. Hi. Um, Hi. Just how serious do you think the issue is here on the South Coast? Look, I think a number of us uh, are getting concerned just by stories around around the, the place and also just looking at sometimes some of the cars parked around the areas here grouped together. Mm. And it was actually my wife woke up to the fact that she's saying to to me, they're possibly the home, some homeless people living in their cars. Mm. And while I didn't check that out with the police, um, I understand that that was in fact the reality. Uh, and I won't name obviously where those places are, but I had, a, as you rightly said, uh, some experience earlier on working with homeless youth in the city of Adelaide. And so the signs become fairly clear if you're looking around the place to think that place, that person is homeless. About how many people are we looking at in, in the south coast of Victor Harbour and uh, Alexandria and Council? Look, if we include the three distinct areas across the southern Florida Peninsula, it's somewhere between 100 and 200 people. And what are the reasons these people, is it the typical thing of domestic violence and economics or is it other things? Steve, I think it varies between every individual. There's some people who, who choose that lifestyle. There's no doubt about that. Yep. To other people who are fleeing domestic violence, obviously. But I'm also concerned that people are reaching that stage where they can't afford any longer mm. to be paying their mortgages. Uh, I can't imagine uh, over the time that I had a mortgage going up by $1,000 in a month. Mm. I could not imagine that. And so I think there's potentially a couple of different streams of people uh, that we're talking about, but it is potential. So it's very hard to nail down numbers on that. What can be done, do you think, about the psychological issues that cause homelessness in some instances? Support. Okay. Support, support, support. How so? People to, How does that work? Of, of people who are supported in their everyday living skills. There's nothing flash about it. There's nothing particularly, um, what's going to say, technical about it. It is seeing what they need to do to learn to live within a housing trust uh, area, for example, or in private rental if they can get and afford it. Now, there's a meeting, a public meeting, that's scheduled for soon. There is. Uh, just let us know about what's happening and who you'd like to come along. Steve, I was really um, chuffed when I was asked to chair that meeting yeah. because I'd expressed concern to a number of people around the place and then we suddenly find that there is a, a meeting being organised to do this. So we invited quite a number of people around. There will be myself and Terry going around to all three of the um, community radio stations here and yeah. thank you to... Uh, South Coast Television for allowing mm. this time here. That would appreciate it very much. So we've invited people from right across the board. There are a couple of guest speakers on the day and also other people that have agreed to come along, like the coordinator of the Neighbourhood Centre up at Strathalban. Uh, I have had apologies from the likes of Greg Pattinson from uh, Food Bank, for example. So a lot mm. of people are putting their hand up to come along. And also Alexandrina are sending along, hopefully, people from that area down there. So I'm hoping to get a whole gamut of people together to look at the, the problem and to gather together all those different opinions about what might be causing it. So it's uh, being held on the 21st of June at the Gospel Centre on uh, George Main Road here in Victor Harbour and starting at 2pm. So guest speakers, but really an open forum to invite people to uh, give us their opinions. Mm. How can ordinary people who are not specialists in this area help out with the, in solving this crisis? To attend the meeting. Okay. <laughs> I think that, that's the first thing. Give us their opinion. And to, um, I don't, I'm not suggesting for a moment people take individual action on it. I think it's too big yep. for that one. And we will be circulating um, uh, a petition we're asking people to sign. Now, that is being circulated at the moment. The three angels here in Victor Harbour will have that on their desk very, very soon and we'll hopefully get it into all of the op shops very, very soon. So we'd like to be able to present that to the Victor Harbour Council and, and of course, other councils. And we're hoping for 500 signatures on that. So um, that's our next plan is to, to circulate that one around. Circulate the flyers as far and wide as we can to appreciate, for, to ask people to come along uh, and uh, they might want to talk about their experiences mm. of homelessness. So that's how people can help out to sign the petition and come along. Alan Purcell, thank you very much. Thank you, Steve.
Terry Andrews is a former counselor in Victor Harbor, and like many people in the community, he's deeply concerned about this issue. Terry, I'm just wondering what you think the role of councils uh, can be in helping out to deal with the homelessness issue, and whether it's something that maybe can only be dealt with by state and federal governments. It's everyone's issue. It's all elected members, federal, state, and local council, and indeed mine and yours, mm -hmm. because the homeless issue is going to get bigger and bigger. We all know that. Tell us about what Wodonga is doing in specific terms. Okay, they're providing three things uh, and they involve their community in it. They involve the residents and saying, how do you feel about it? What would you like to see happen? As I say, the first instance is overnight accommodation. Uh, secondly, uh, secure lockers for people to put their gear into and 24 hour, um, shall we say, ablutions, shower, toilet facilities, etc. Uh, as you know, many of the uh, toilet facilities are, are locked overnight, uh, so it's a long time yeah, to hold it. Right. But at the end of the day, what you've really got to do is to think of it not as a long-term solution, not as a solution for the other people to work out. It is our problem. We have our society, it's our residents, you know, and therefore I believe that we're going to be able to make a, uh, a change and along those sort of lines that those sort of facilities, short, long term and, you know, immediate, if you like, yeah. facilities should be and can be provided. Now, this is working in Wodonga. I'm wondering if it's practical, given the budget issues in Victor, in uh, Victor Harbour and in Alexandrina, whether it's possible to do something like that locally. It's interesting, isn't it? Because I spoke to a lot of the residents uh, in this area, and most of them are saying, we don't mind if some of our rates, $10 or $20 of our rates, go towards helping something that is positive, you know, helping our, our own fellow human beings. And that's what we're asking for, you know. So, I mean, first and foremost, we need a public meeting. People to come along and express their views in an open forum so that we can judge what we as a community can do for the uh, people that are, are still our residents, whether, they, whether um, elected members like it or not. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we need to help those that need help. And I think that's the most important thing. Terry Andrews, thanks very much. Thank you. Here in Victor Harbor, Lana Tui Onatwa has been helping homeless people for some time now. What we supply uh, for the homeless in Victor Harbor is clothing, food. Uh, we can't give them a place to stay. Uh, we have had homeless people that have been fortunate enough to find accommodation. So in the last few weeks, we've had them approach us to ask if we could furnish uh, the units. Uh, we also uh, give and service spiritual counselling. Some of the homeless uh, don't want to be known. So for those in our surrounding areas and uh, our community that know the work that we're doing, we have uh, the food that we give away every Thursday and Sunday. And what makes us very different from other opportunity shops is that we don't monitor like most places do. What we do is we open the doors and then we ask the public, whether they be homeless or those that are really struggling, um, to come with a shopping bag and take the food that they need, only what they need, until they see us the following uh, few days or the following week. And some of those that are homeless don't want to be known, like I said, so what they do is they come and get the food that they need that we have on the day and then they leave. And we don't know who they are unless someone points them out to us and that's fine. And then we have those that want to offload and they want to be known. And then that's what the Three Angels Helping Hands House is for. They come here, we allow them to pour out their burdens, 
we support them, we love them. They choose what they need because we do have a dry food pantry as well to them and our community and surrounding areas. And then we give them food in that sense. And once again, the time and place for that public meeting on homelessness, it is Wednesday, the 21st of June, starting at 2 p.m. That's at the Gospel Center in Victor Harbor. I'm Steve Robertson. South Coast Television, your community, your voice.